Um, anyway, you may be asking yourselves right now, um, Altcar Expo, we got an idle management solution, we got a fuel economy range extending solution, and we have our grant funding program. It's like, why, why do we have these on the same panel? Well, <clears throat> this, the short answer is we're trying to keep um, this, this particular program focused on emerging technologies and new stuff. We don't want to come here and talk about uh, GPS that if you're fleet manager, you probably heard about it for 15 years. Um, these are relatively new developments. Idle management is not a, a, a new idea, but certainly GRIP's approach is different. The smart pedal, again, here's a new idea coming forward. And then the Air Quality Management District's funding program, uh, where else have you heard of funding specifically um, targeted and enhanced for disadvantaged communities, both economically and uh, environmentally, and oh, by the way, for used vehicles? So what, what you're hearing about here, I mean, these things are all on the cutting edge. And when, when you talk about um, the, the last point I'm going to make before we get to, to questions, when you talk about the range extending or mileage enhancing technology, when you talk about the grip idle management, um, normally clean cities, we're focused on alternative fuels. We want to displace petroleum consumption. Doesn't matter what fuel you use, as long as it's not petroleum based, we love it. Well, that's been the philosophy for years and years. But now as technology advanced, we realize, hey, you know what? There's other solutions out there that are helping us accomplish the same goal. Because a, a, a really smart guy, uh, he, he sort of coined this phrase, and I thought it was wonderful, so I rip it off from Claude Masters. Some of you might know him. Um, right, let's have a show of hands here. Um, anybody want to guess what, what the cleanest type of fuel you can run in your vehicles is? Battery electric? Show of hands. Nobody's for battery. Hydrogen? Yep. Oh, nobody wants to play the game. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, at, at, at the end of the day, just like Claude told me, words of wisdom, the cleanest fuel you can use in your vehicles is the one you never burn. Think about that for a second. And you have two vendors here that can help you accomplish that as a fleet manager. So anyway, I want to open up the floor to questions from the audience. Susan. Um, so for Tin, um, question on um, on your your program there. I know there was an article last week that talked about the problems with dealers selling EVs that a lot of them don't even have a plugged in EV for people to test drive, and that's a big barrier for people in the in the consumer market looking to purchase EVs. What I guess I'm wondering what you think the Air District's um, kind of thought on that, your relationship with dealers. Kind of what what the approach is there to for the for this program? Yeah, so so that, that's a great question. Um, we uh, so some of the dealers that we're working with. Um, well, let me start by saying this: the the dealers in the Bay Area are um, are more knowledgeable than than other dealers in, in other regions. Um, and so, if you've ever gone into a dealership, um, you'll see that some of the salespeople are trained. Um, trained up on the vehicles and, and have more knowledge about the vehicles. Um, with our program, um, during our outreach events, we plan on having um, vehicles and, and having an EV showcase as part of the, the events. And so residents can come and take a look at the vehicles. Um, some of the dealers that we've partnered with, um, they're going to be also bringing vehicles to the to the events. So we'll have we'll have Priuses, we'll have um, Bolts and and Bolts and and um, new and used cars for for folks to to take a look at it and maybe get in and, and test drive. Yeah. Mark, I'm curious, five to 10% mileage gains across a bunch of different types. Why aren't the OEMs installing this on their own? Yeah, that's, that's almost always the first question, actually. Um, it has to do with how EPA testing is done. And I, I first want to say the, it's what I'm going to say is not a criticism of the EPA. They actually have a really good process. And it's a process designed to mitigate cheating by the OEMs. So they have the vehicles brought indoors, put on a dynamometer, and then it's spun up and spun down, and, and they're measuring the fuel efficiency. The trouble with that, yeah, it's a perfectly smooth surface, so nothing happens. <laughs> We've done uh, a lot of testing on everything from you know test tracks in Arizona with OEMs to um, to uh, military vehicles in Canada, and it just always comes down to it's not um, a number that goes on uh, an EPA sticker. Um, 
So not so much true with the tanks, but uh, <laughs> but other things. Um, you know, which is which took us about a year and a half to figure out. If you're curious about the process, and all of a sudden we realized, yeah, but oh, maybe we should talk with the fleet operators who actually pay the fuel bills, and and that was that. And and the reason we don't sell to consumers, we or at least not market to them, is because we can't afford to. The cost for us isn't our support cost or, or the manufacturing cost; it's the marketing cost. And I got the opportunity to talk with about 30, 40 people all at once today for 10 minutes, but that's a way too expensive conversation for a $299 technology to consumers. And by the way, from my military days, I know that fuel tank economy isn't miles per gallon. It's seriously gallons per mile. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so huge opportunity there, federal government. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just want to add one thing. That there's certain things that happen in this job, and one of them was when we were on the test track with the tanks. We were told not to look over at what the special forces people were doing, or they'd come over and do something to us. But they test like all sorts of special things. It wasn't normally a part of the job description, but we did. I have two questions, one for Duncan and one for Tim. Uh, first for Duncan, can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the, the form factor for your system and kind of where it's installed within vehicles and also um, across vehicle weight classes, kind of how it's configured and, and the sizing and power capabilities of it? And then for Tim, my question is um, regarding the Clean Cars for All program. Uh, could you give the audience a little bit of a flavor of which communities, which municipalities will be eligible for phase one funding? And then also a question with respect to kind of the cut points for eligibility. Um, my thought would be that, you know, anything older than 2002 would probably be a good segment to target because LEV2 standards for CARB go into effect model year 02. And so anything older than that's going to have a much higher criteria pollutant emission factor than anything 2002 or cleaner. So those two questions, you can take them in whatever order. So thanks for the question. Um, I didn't go into a lot of technical detail, but uh, we use the same technology and the same components, uh, whether it's a uh, Dodge Charger uh, police vehicle or whether it's a large uh, off-highway uh, vehicle. It's all the same components. So one of the benefits of the GRIP is not only can it be deployed universally across a fleet, and that means all four uh, or all, all types of fuel. We shouldn't say hydrogen, but LPG, CNG, gas, and diesel. So we have uh, on the port side, we're working in Vancouver right now on LPG. A um, lot of issues uh, in, in using uh, some of those gases in terms of maintenance that they've recognized and we're addressing. Um, in terms of form factor, we've got a controller that sits behind the dash. Uh, and then we've got a, an optional display. We recommend the display to get driver buy-in and adoption, but it's very important. There are sort of three stakeholders that we deal with. The operators themselves, uh, the fleet managers in terms of looking at the uh, obviously benefits from a cost point of view, and then maintenance. And there is no maintenance requirement, only an installation component uh, from your fleet's maintenance department. Okay, so um, for the Clean Cars for All program, um, there, I can give some examples of, of some of the communities that we're going to be targeting. Um, but just, just in general, these are communities that, that you'll most likely see that are along like transportation uh, corridors um, near the freeways, um, near refineries, areas that, are, that are, have higher uh, levels of, of air pollution. So um, some examples would be uh, West Oakland um, near, the, near the ports, um, Richmond. Um, Parts of, of San Jose, um, um, those are the areas that we're, we're targeting with our outreach events, um, just because we know that there's a lot of um, older vehicles um, that, are, that are located there. So um, I know, I know it, it sounds um, kind of weird when we, when we were talking about 1996 or older, but just for reference, there are about 450,000 um, vehicles registered in the Bay Area that are 1996 or older. Um, and within, um, our targeted communities, there's about 169,000 vehicles. Um, and the Air District has a, a separate program um, called the Vehicle Buyback Program, where we um, will scrap an, an, uh, a 96 or older vehicle and give $1,000 uh, $1, check to, to residents. And um, with that program, we, we retire about 7,000 vehicles annually. So there's plenty of vehicles out there that, that meet the criteria that, that, um, that we can target. Yep. 
Well, with that, um, we're going to conclude this panel. It's just going to take us uh, a couple of minutes to load up the new slides. So let's thank our panelists while we conduct the changeover. <laughs>